I've been saying for a while that Be Quiet needs to release a 420 millimeter AIO, and they finally did it. This is the Silent Loop 3. It's a big AIO aimed at enthusiasts, overclockers, and workstation users. If 420 millimeters is too big for you, the Silent Loop 3 is also available in 360 millimeters and 240 millimeters as well. At the time of this recording, it's only available in black, but I do hope they add a white model eventually. Be Quiet ships their AIOs with some extra coolant to help enhance the life of the cooler. The unit comes pre-filled from the factory, so don't worry, you don't need to do anything before you use it. The purpose is to top up the coolant as it evaporates over time. Be Quiet recommends a top up after two years of use. There's a little fill port on the radiator that I'll show you in just a minute here. This box has all your mounting hardware and accessories. This is a three-way fan connector or splitter. You can plug all three fans into there and then you have a single connector to go to your CPU fan header on your motherboard. This is a mounting frame that you'll need if you're gonna be installing this in a Threadripper system. This package has all your mounting hardware for both Intel and AMD. And there's a little tube of thermal paste in there too because there's nothing pre-applied on the AIO. You're gonna need to do that yourself. This model is powered by three 140 millimeter Silent Wings 4 PWM high-speed fans. These are excellent by the way, I've tested them out and used them in some of my builds, really solid high quality fans. Speeds top out at 1900 RPM, airflow can reach up to 78.4 CFM, and air pressure measures 2.36 millimeters H2O. This thing is beautifully designed. RGB lighting will shine through the grill on top there. There's no LCD screen, no crazy 360 degree wraparound lighting, nothing like that. Be Quiet kept the design simple and elegant, and I think it looks awesome. The radiator's 27 millimeters thick, which is pretty standard. It's 457 millimeters long, and that includes the part where the hoses attach. I noticed there's no branding or any kind of design on it, it's just plain black with a beveled section in the center along the sides. This little screw here is actually the cap on the fill port. So when the time comes, you'll just open that and top it up with some of the included coolant. Given its location, you'll probably have to remove the cooler from your system to be able to do this. Actually, it's probably a good idea to remove it anyway, regardless of its location, just so you don't end up spilling coolant all over your other hardware. It's got a nice nickel-plated copper base with a big contact surface, and it needs to be big to properly cover Threadripper processors. If you're not familiar with 420mm AIOs, they're quite a bit bigger than the more common 360mm variants. This is the Silent Loop 3 sitting next to a 360mm Light Loop for reference. Everything's quite a bit bigger on the 420 except for the tubes. For some reason, Be Quiet went with these much narrower tubes on the bigger model. I don't know why, but I wish they didn't do that. I think thicker tubes look a lot better, especially on a high performance cooler like this one. This is actually one of the easier AIOs to get installed because it doesn't have an ARGB or fan controller hub. That alone eliminates a ton of extra wires and connectors that you don't need to deal with and just makes the installation process so much better. All right, the first thing I like to do is get the fans installed on the radiator. This is always easier to do before the cooler is installed in the case. Be Quiet recommends mounting the fans in a push configuration rather than pull, and I'm gonna follow their advice. When you're mounting your fans, make sure you pay attention to where the wires are gonna end up. Otherwise, you might have some kind of weird situation with cables in your build. Just make sure they're gonna end up in a position where they can easily pass through a cutout or routing point in your case. Each fan gets screwed down to the radiator with four screws. I'm using an electric screwdriver here to save time. If you plan to do the same, just make sure you don't use something with too much torque so you don't crack the fan casing. Now I'm mounting the radiator to my case's AIO installation plate. That way when it's time to get it into the case, it's all ready to go and I can just slide it in. If your case doesn't have a mounting plate, no big deal. You'll be mounting the radiator just the same, but directly to your case instead. I'm installing this cooler on an AMD AM5 system with a Ryzen 9 9950X CPU. To get the motherboard ready for the cooler, we need to remove the stock plastic holders from the AMD retention module around the socket. Next, we have to place the four AMD spacers onto the bolts on the motherboard backplate where we just removed the holders. Now we can line up these steel mounting brackets on the spacers and screw them down with the four included screws. And you want to make sure they're down nice and tight. Normally I'd install the radiator into the case at this point, but I'm going to do that after because if I do it now, it'll obstruct the view and make it hard for me to show you the thermal paste application. So let's get our little tube of thermal paste that came with the cooler. There's a lot of different ways or ideas how to do this. Personally, I like to just do a little line or a blob right in the middle of the heat spreader on the CPU. That's good there. If you wanna see a more detailed video about thermal paste application, I will link one for you down in the description. Okay, now I'm gonna mount the radiator. Because I have that mounting plate, all I have to do is slide it into position and tighten up the two thumb screws. But like I said before, if your case doesn't work like this, then you'll just be screwing the radiator right to the case in this step. Now before you put the water block down on the CPU, make sure you remember to remove the plastic cover on the cold plate. I've missed that before and yeah, it wasn't good. 
With the plastic removed, we can lower the block down onto the CPU, line up the holes in the bracket with the screws on both sides of the block, and then start screwing it down. When you're tightening, you wanna go back and forth between the two screws to help evenly distribute the pressure so you get a nice even spread on that thermal paste. Just go back and forth a couple turns on each side at a time until everything's tight. All right, now we have to connect the fans, pump, and ARGB for the lighting. Starting with the tack cable from the pump, this is what's gonna feed RPM information into your system. We're gonna take that and plug it into the AIO pump header on the motherboard. Now I'm gonna bring the fan wires through to the back of the case and connect each one to the three-way connector or splitter that came with the AIO. Then we're gonna take this single four pin connector from the splitter and plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. And finally, we have to take the three pin ARGB cable and plug it into an open five volt ARGB header. The case I'm using here is the Be Quiet Light Base 900FX, and even though it fully supports 420 millimeter AIOs, it's still a pretty tight fit. Pay attention to clearances when you're planning a build with a big AIO like this. Depending on your hardware configuration that you go with, space could be kind of limited. The cooler looks awesome all lit up. Like I said at the beginning of the video, there's no dedicated lighting controller and that means no proprietary software from Be Quiet. Instead, it uses that ARGB connection to synchronize with the motherboard. So you can use your motherboard's lighting control software to configure it the way you want. I like it this way. There's way too many ARGB software applications out there these days from all these different vendors. It's just too much. Just give me basic motherboard control and I'm happy. For the performance testing, I'm running the cooler through a series of Cinebench 2024 loops. This benchmark's great for testing coolers because it pushes CPU load all the way to 100%, giving us a pretty good idea what a cooler can do. I'm also putting it up against a 360 millimeter AIO from Be Quiet. It's the Light Loop 360, just to give some context to the results and make it really easy to see if there's any advantages or disadvantages to going with this bigger model. The full test system specs are listed down below in the description if you want to check that out. At 25 and 50% fan speeds, both of these coolers are keeping the 9950X pretty cool, especially considering it's being pushed to full load. But the Silent Loop 3 takes the lead, keeping the average CPU temperature below 70 degrees at 50% fan speed, and it's producing less noise than the 360mm AIO. It's a clear win for the bigger model. Ramping the fans up to 75%, the trend continues with the Silent Loop 3 providing better cooling performance and less overall noise. The situation changes as we push the fans to their limits on both coolers. At 100% fan speed, the 420 millimeter model still has no problem beating the 360 in raw cooling performance, but the noise results are now reversed and the Silent Loop 3 becomes the louder of the two, although not by a huge amount. Now, just a quick word on pump noise. I'm pretty sure this is the quietest AIO pump I've ever used. It's whisper quiet, even if I put my ear right up to it. Whatever Be Quiet did with this new design is clearly working to keep noise down. Overall, the Silent Loop 3 is a solid AIO. It's capable of cooling modern high-end CPUs like the Ryzen 9950X, delivering some awesome performance and a quiet noise profile. High performance and quiet aren't two things that go together that easily, and that's what makes this one so impressive. And Be Quiet seems to have priced it fairly. The performance you get for the price makes this an easy recommend for me. I have some more specs, details, and information for you down in the description. Check that stuff out if you're interested. Make sure you get subscribed for more content, and we'll see you soon.